Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. It's your coach, Carla Nicole. And I just have a quick message for you. Not going to be long. So um, I want to talk about the fact that um, we need to be a little more honest with ourselves. And um, the honesty of self is vitally important that we do. Because if we don't, we have a tendency to mess up <laughs> pretty drastically things that may be in our favor um, for our life. So I want to talk about why it's important that we pay attention to what we're not used to. Uh, a lot of times we don't want to admit it but there's things that we are not used to and once it comes into our life we have a tendency allowing our we have a tendency to um become overwhelmed with the um newfound awareness that uh we're just not used to something so prime example if we're not used to being treated well and someone comes in our life and treats us well uh, because we are not used to it. A lot of times, we, a lot of times we became we become more, um, I don't know, frustrated by the um, the kind heartedness. We're not used to it, so we don't really understand it, nor do we really know what to do with it. Um, and then if we're not used to money. Uh, we have a tendency to just spend it erratically. Uh, we, we just do a lot of things with the money that we shouldn't be doing with it because we're not used to the money being in our possession. When we're not used to peace or joy um, and we get around people that are peaceful and joyful, we tend to feel some type of way or we begin to think, well, what? that's weird. Why are they always smiling? What's so great about life? Why are they so happy? I don't have that. I don't have this and that or whatever, what have you. And we become real negative, right? Because we just do not want to own the fact that we are not used to it. One of the powerful things about this life is we have to admit to ourselves that we are not used to something. If we don't have money, and money comes in our hands, we better get real honest with self real quick. Because as soon as that money hits your hands, it's gone if you are not used to having it. Um, also, if you have a love affair that shows up in your life, and this person is kind-hearted, loving, caring, compassionate, um, and you never had that, <laughs> you better get serious with self and be like, I don't know what this is but it's really so-called too good to be true and the problem is it is not too good to be true you can have healthy loving relationships you can have wealth and money you can have joy and peace it just comes down to your understanding of self and your your honesty with self that I am okay and accepting of these things because when these things show up and we start to we start self-sabotaging and destroying the goodness that comes in our life, um, the opportunities of those things coming up again is unlikely. And so opportunities show up with the goodness that they come with. We better sit down and be honest with ourselves like, wait a minute. Hey, this showed up. I'm not used to it. I don't know what to do with it. I'm not even sure if, you know what I'm saying? I don't even know if I um, can sustain this because I have never had this happen to me or I've never had this joy before. It is okay. Okay. So here's the thing, because I don't have long. Just got to keep this kind of quick. So when joy comes in your life, a good person comes in your life, a substantial amount of money comes in your life. Here's what you do. Rather than being overly confident that you know what you're doing, when clearly you 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 really are not. 
you you don't know what you're doing. You're really uninformed. You really don't know what to do. Don't touch the money. Don't try to do anything with this new relationship until you sit down before yourself and say to you, we don't know what we're doing. And what I mean by we is myself and my reflection coming back from this mirror. I clearly don't know what I'm doing. Because if I don't know what I'm doing, how am I going to be able to sustain this? For instance, perfect example, when you first become a parent <laughs> and you've got this beautiful bundle of joy and the baby's here, you may be never breastfed a day in your life or you never changed a diaper before. You just don't assume, well, um, the baby's just going to have to wet on itself and we're just going to have to wing it. No, you have to figure out, well, let me, let me get together with some moms. Let me get together with some parents. Let me find out some real true people that already have done this that can help me with this new baby. Same thing. It applies to joy. When you've never had joy in your life and all you've been around is headache and havoc and, and drama and aggravation, when someone shows up in your life and they're peaceful, you're going to be like constantly suspicious. Like, okay, when's it coming? When is all the dread going to happen? I know it's coming because I've never had somebody this kind to me without me owing them something or or something going beyond just us being friends. I already know that I don't know anything about this. This is the thing. The reality is we're not always experts. <laughs> There's going to come times when we show when something in our life shows up, we have no clue what what to do with it. But in that time, when we really have no knowledge or really have no understanding of what to do to sustain it or what to do to hold it true to our value, we have to then turn around and say, I don't know what to do. Let me get serious about what to do to fix this. And when you do that, you'll find out, okay, now I can evolve. Now I can, I can now change what I thought I knew into having a newfound knowledge. I'm going to be live later on again and talk about this a little bit deeper, but I got to run. But listen, take heed to what I'm saying. If you really don't know something, be honest and get together with people. Start researching. Start figuring out what do I need to do? Get a hold to an accountant if money hits your hands and you don't know what to do with it. Get a hold to somebody that's already in a very cultivated, beautiful, loving relationship and say, hey, I've never been in a love affair before. What do I need to do here to sustain my love affair I now have? Because love is not always easy. But yet, if you don't get centered and honest with yourself, you're going to sabotage that love affair. You're going to get rid of it prematurely. You're going to destroy it. You're going to tell someone, I don't want to be with you because you are too good for me. And I don't know what to do with all of that. Here's the thing. You don't want to do that. Opportunities don't show up all the time. You're not always going to get love that comes in and it's going to be authentic and caring and, and compassionate. It's just not what it is. So we have to hold on to those opportunities and learn how to cultivate them. But we first have to be honest with self. Shit, I don't know shit about love. <laughs> Listen, this fine piece of man or this beautiful woman. I've never been involved with someone like this before. They're cultivated. They're beautiful. They're loving. They're caring. They treat me right. They treat me well. They don't curse at me. I don't know what to do with this. Okay. So if you really truly don't know, then own that shit. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Rather than, you know, when I was young, my dad used to try to teach me about electronics. Now, I'm not at all interested in electronics or computers or nothing like that. Trying to learn that stuff was just, just not my forte. I'll put it that way. But anyway, he would say, here's the computer. You know, sit down. I want you to pay attention to how, how to do this. And I'm typing on the computer. He says, stop pushing buttons. Stop pushing buttons. You don't know what you're doing. We do the same thing in life right now. With stuff that comes into our life, beautiful opportunities, and we destroy it. Why do we destroy it? Because we don't want to own, we don't know what the hell we're doing. We have to be honest with self. 
we have to sit down and say, listen, how do I get to the next level of this opportunity? For instance, if money hits your, money hits your hands, you never had money before or money to this amount before. Rather than saying, hey, let's go party, let's show up, let's party, you know, let's do this and buy this and pay this off and do, stop, wait a minute, talk to some accountants, talk to some people that already are used to having that money and talk to them, hey, what do you do when you have this amount coming to your account? I haven't had that before. Can you please explain to me what you do or hell, just help me. Or get with people that you know are are around people with a lot of money. They can tell you, well, this is what we do to sustain it. This is how we grow it. This is how we... Listen, we're not experts at everything. But we have a tendency to just lie to ourselves. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I know. I know. I tell my kids all the time when they tell me they know. I tell them knowing and doing is two different things. Knowing that if I get money, I should put it in savings isn't necessarily the right way to do it. You have to do research and learn more than what you think you know in order to sustain and get better at what you have. I'm just saying. But like I said, I'm going to come on later on and give a little more in-depth details about how to really get better with um not self-sabotaging we have a tendency not to be honest because um we lie to ourselves all the time we think that if i if i claim something and uh if i uh lie long enough the lie will become a truth that's not but that's not how this works you have to sit down and be honest with you and say i don't know what i'm doing in certain circumstances, be honest. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to fix this. I don't know. I've never had a man care about me, as an example. I've never had a man love me before. And this guy is doing everything that all the all of my past lovers didn't do. And now I have this newfound regard and his, his concern for me is all over. I, I just don't know. I've never had this before. So how do I make sure that I sustain this? How do I make sure that I can, you know, cultivate it and, and keep it sacred and keep it private and keep it joyful? And how do I, what do I do? This is why I think a lot of us, we end up getting love affairs and we regret later. We regret later because we don't get serious when we have it right here before us. We end up sabotaging stuff and then we're like, oh, later on. He really wasn't that bad. He really wasn't a bad guy. I should have just been a little more patient or maybe I should have talked to some of my friends that really care about me having a beautiful relationship rather than talking to girlfriends that really would rather me stay single like them. Maybe I should have a better friend circle that I could talk to about some things I'm going through. Whereas they have a respect and regard for my love and my and me and the, the he and I. But a lot of times our, our friend circle wants to see it destroyed. They want to see you by yourself so they can enjoy you and, 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 and y'all's misery can, can match. They don't want you in a relationship. They would much rather you be single like them. And as long as you're single like them, guess what? They're happy. But you're not. <laughs> you're struggling and you just want a good love affair. You just want a good relationship. But every time you talk to the wrong friend circle about certain things going on, they're going to push you away from that love affair that is really a good one. Again, I'm just trying to give it to you raw. We need to sit down and start looking at what are we doing with good opportunities that come in our way. Because when we don't sit down and get honest, we're going to start finding out, damn, I had a good opportunity here. I just messed it up. Well, can't we be proactive and try to prevent that this time? Since you're on this feed, can you share this video? Can you start talking amongst your girlfriends and say, hey, we need to do better with this because we're self-sabotaging good love affairs. We're self-sabotaging making money grow. <laughs> as soon as we get, as soon as that money hits our hands, we're... Making it rain. Woo! Money, money. 
and broke. That doesn't make any sense. Woo! And then later on, you have what? Shopper's regret. <laughs> Shopper's remorse. I shouldn't have spent all that. I should have waited. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that. I get it. But sometimes we need people to keep it real, and I'm that coach. So a lot of people might not like my coaching style, but that's what I do. I keep it real. I keep it 100. I tell you the truth. And the reality is this. If you keep having good men show up and you don't know what to do with them, they're going to start to fade back and your opportunities are going to lessen. If you keep having money show up and every time you get it after six months, it's gone. Money isn't going to be money. Opportunities are going to start to fade as well. If you have all this peace in your life and all you do is say, oh, I'm bored with it. I want drama. I want all the hell. Okay. Then guess what? Peace is going to fade back and all you're going to have is hell, havoc, and drama. We self-sabotage, but we must sit down and speak to self. Be honest. I don't know what to do with this fabulous love affair. I don't know what to do with money when it hits my hands. I don't know what to do when peace is in my life. I constantly go on these cycles of destroying stuff. So every time I go on these cycles of destroying, it isn't the other person. It isn't the opportunities. It's me because I'm not being proactive and figuring out ways to improve what I do with opportunities when they show up including the way I handle my love affairs, including the way I handle my finances, including the way I handle my health, including the way I handle my peace. What boundaries I'm setting up in my life. Whew, I'm just trying to put you on game, guys. We can do better if we get honest with ourselves. This is a self-love act. We're going to do this as self-love act takes 10. Self-love act take 10. You have got to be honest with you and you've got to start owning what you do not know and what you are not used to. When you own those things and you try to come up with plans of trying to make sure that you don't allow the knowledge, lack of knowledge to destroy what you have coming before you, you can find out that you'll have a better, more fulfilling life. I really hope this helps you. Please share this video. We need this to go viral. At this point, listen, we need to keep it a buck because at the end of the day, more people are self-sabotaging stuff that's truly good for them. I'm talking about good for them. Good people, good men, good women, good, good uh, opportunities, financial opportunities. We're destroying it because we don't want to own. We have a lack of knowledge. There's some things we don't know. Okay, I don't know it. So let me not fake that I do. <laughs> Real shit. Because you know when we do that, it destroys us. It destroys our opportunities from happening more often and frequently. And it destroys the very thing that we are able to start to capitalize on. We can start getting some more gains and more traction and more positive things in our life. The more we can own that these things that are going on is because of my lack of knowledge and also my lack of trying to put provisions up so that if something like this does show up, I can make sure, okay, this showed up into my life. Let me make sure I'm prepared. Let me prepare now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I want this. I want a good love affair. I want a good love affair, but I don't know a thing about how to sustain one. I want good money in my life, but I don't know a thing about how to take care and manage money. I want good credit, but I don't know a thing about managing and making sure that credit works for me. I don't know a thing <laughs> about how to make sure I'm sustaining my health. All of these things are important to take time to learn because I'm telling you now, more people are walking around in regret because they were not ready for that opportunity when it showed up. Good men, like I say all the time, I see girls, they have good men, honey. I be like, girl, if he was in my space, honey, I'll show you what to do with him. You messing up. <laughs> you are messing up. I'll tell her in a minute. Don't have him over here because he will be just fine. Understand that. 
But see, we don't want to be honest, right? We don't want to be honest. We want to keep it going like, oh, you know, he's just so nice. And I don't know, you know, it's kind of too good to be true. That's foolishness. That's foolishness. You're going to find yourself talking yourself right up out of a good love affair or a good relationship, a good man. Because of what? <laughs> you. You and your lack of thinking that you deserve it. Because again, we're coming back to self. Me. You guys need to share this video. I'm telling you now. A lot of people don't want to be honest with self. We will tell our friends all kinds of stuff and be lying dead to our own face in the mirror every morning. Tell my, I know what to do. If I get money, I know what to do with it. No, you don't. No, you don't. As soon as you get that money, you would go to Victoria's Secrets and you'd go over to Michael Kors and you'd go to get you some diamonds. You'd go there, go there, would spend it like water. And then guess what? In two and a half weeks, the money's gone. And so was the joy that you had in your soul. Oh, I thought I was going to have this money. Okay, but the money's gone now. So where's the joy at now? But when you sit down and say, look, I really, I really need to do some studying. <laughs> Let me sit down with some financial advisors and talk to them. The money's not here yet, but I know it's coming or I have a desire for me to start to receive abundance. Then I need to sit down and look at well, what kind of things do I need to have in place if money shows up? Because uh, if it does, I don't want to lose it. And then let me figure out how to manage the little bit of crumbs I got now so that I'm not living above my means. Because if I have a little bit of crumbs now and I can't even, after I pay all my bills, I don't even have anything after that, you're broke. <laughs> you're still broke. Even when you pay all your bills and, you're, and you don't have anything after that, you're broke. So the reality is until we sit down and we get real and we get raw and we talk about the truth to self, we can start sitting back and saying, you know what? I am going to start owning my truth. And my truth is this. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. So because I don't know what I'm doing, I'm now going to be provisional and set up ways and talk to people and get involved so that I do know what I'm doing if a new love affair shows up, a healthy one. If money shows up, I can know what to do and plan and figure out how to grow that money. If peace shows up, I won't get bored with it. I'll applaud it and welcome it and enjoy it. Have some peace. Do you know what peace is? A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't take in in the joy of peace. They think the quiet and the lack of drama and the lack of all kinds of havoc is boring. I'm bored with it. It's like, really? How are you bored with joy? How are you bored with peace? Well, I'm bored because I don't have anybody to argue with and fight with and cuss out. I want to be, you know, okay, but then you, you need to look at you. Because really, if you're bored with this life, you're not doing it right. I'm just saying. <laughs> Make sure y'all share this video. I'm out of here. I'll be on later on. We're going to talk a little bit more. I want to get a little more in depth about why we're self-sabotaging stuff. And we don't, and we shouldn't have to. We really shouldn't have to. We should be able to sustain some love. We should be able to sustain some money. We should be able to sustain some peace. But a lot of us are not. I'm just saying. All right, guys, I'm out of here. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept.